the, the virus was always present on Oahu, and uh, it, it was, but it was not a very serious threat. Uh, in the maybe the 80s or the early 70s, some areas got it real bad, and then uh, they, they gave up. And then we in this area started to do papaya farming, and we did well, you know, for quite a number of years. But then the virus eventually arrived here. And virus, again, is just a, you know, an ordinary virus that's passed on by the aphids. And so once it comes into an area, because of homeowners planting uh, trees in their backyards, because farmers are not knowledgeable about the virus, they harbor the virus, and pretty soon it spreads and spreads and spreads. And for a farmer like me, when, what happens is when you go through a field, and you, we go through the field every, every week, we harvest papayas every week, you go through a field and you see a, a, a diseased tree, you know, it turns um, yellow and it, the production drops, the quality drops, the sweetness drops, everything is just bad. It doesn't kill the tree. And that's the bad thing because the virus stays in the tree, but it gets, it's, it's like a reservoir. And so the aphids just feed off of it and spread it on to other trees. So what we used to do was just rogue it out. We used to cut, every week we go through, we cut and cut and cut. Eventually, you come to a point where you know you cut so many trees and you got many holes in the field, and so it's just not worth it anymore. And so you, you know you give up. And I've done that several times. When we were going through this, uh, you know, Dr. Gonzalez in the early, um, in the late '80s, I guess he started with this cross protection business, and he had a um, mild strain virus which he had developed at Cornell University, which he allowed us to use through the University of Hawaii. And what we did was we planted papaya trees. We infected them with a virus, the mild strain virus. Actually infected the papaya seedlings with a virus. Took these seedlings, planted them out in the field, and they were able to grow without contracting the wild virus. They were already uh, infected with a mild strain virus, because of that, they were able to grow, produce, and have reasonable quality. And that's how we survived for a long time. With genetic papaya, well, since the late 90s, and uh, so far I have not had a single customer complain to me or say something's wrong with it. Uh, there is well accepted. I, I myself pride, pride myself in growing a high quality papaya that uh, is in well in demand in Honolulu. I mean, I can't grow enough of it. And so people are always waiting for me, asking me for orders, and I just can't supply them right now. And so we've had never, no problem with this papaya. We've had papayas that were non-genetic before, and I had the same uh, demand. When the genetic material came in, it just transitioned over and no problem, the same thing. It's only when Dennis and uh, the University of Hawaii and those people were able to come out with the cross protection and the new technology that really saved us. It, it gave us another chance at farming and if without that we wouldn't be here today. <laughs>